Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about making a professional looking address block for your Microsoft Access reports. So instead of looking like this where everything's all spaced out because you got individual text boxes for the different fields and you got blank lines in there, we're going to make it look like that. Everything's all nice and together, no blank lines, all that good stuff. You ready? Here we go. Today's question comes from Susan in Redlands, California, one of my gold members. Susan says, I'm using your invoicing database and it works real well. However, is there any way to make the address block look better? Well, you don't like my address block? What? What? Come on. The fields like city, state, and zip code are spaced out and I added an address to line. And if there's nothing in it, it leaves a blank line there. Any ideas? Well, yes, Susan, in the invoicing video, I intentionally kept this simple uh, to keep the database simple for beginners. But with a couple of little tips and tricks, I'm going to show you how to make it look a lot better, just like that one. This was one of those learn to walk before you run things, right? I teach you the basics first, and then we get a little more advanced as we go along. That's how all of my classes work. Now, I am going to consider this an expert level video. What does expert mean? Well, it's not quite beginner but it's not developer either. Experts kind of sandwich between the two. That means you need a little bit more knowledge than the average person who's starting with access, but we don't need any programming for this. So here's what you will need to know. First, watch my invoicing video. If you have not yet watched it already, I teach you how I build the invoice and the order entry system and all that cool jazz. You will need to know how concatenation works. That's taking two strings, two fields and putting them together into one. So watch this if you don't know how to do that. We're going to use some null math, which is a cool trick to get strings to be ignored if you're trying to concatenate them or add them onto a null value. So go watch this video. This is very important. And go watch my video on can grow, can shrink to get rid of those extra lines between fields if something's missing, which won't work today. And we'll talk about why. Go watch all of these. If you don't know this stuff already, they're all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. They're free. You'll find links down below in the description. You can click on to go watch those. So go do that and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy if you'd like. And it's very simple. It's got a customer form. Every customer can have orders. And on each order, you can print an invoice. Now, when I built this invoice, I built it nice and simple right? First name, last name, these are all individual fields. And so each field is going to take up exactly the space that you give it. Okay, city goes there, state goes there, and so on. All right, no way around that. Now, what we can do is for things like first name and last name, and then city, state and zip, we can concatenate those and make them one line, right? Address is fine, country is fine. So let's get rid of last name. All right, we'll make first name bigger. We'll open up its properties, double click. Okay, let's call this one. Now we'll call it first last name. Whoops, my mouse is doing some weird stuff. I click down here, first last name. And then we'll make this equals first name and a space and last name. I'll put those both together in one text box. All right, same thing down here. We'll get rid of city, we'll get rid of state and zip. Okay, oh, come here, click and drag. Okay, we'll make this one, let's rename this one CSZ4 equals city and a space and state and a space and zip. Okay, all right, save it, close it. Let's take a look at it now. All right, a lot better. That right there is a 50% better than what it was before, right? That, that looks nice. All right, now Susan mentioned that she added an address to line and that's okay. Lots of people have address two. You got address one, address two. Even this should be two lines, right? That should technically be on the second line. And you can make your address, you know, you can do a, like a little and a break in there and make a two line address. I don't like doing that though. I do generally put an address two line in a lot of databases that I build. So let's go to the customer table and let's, oh, I got this open. Hang on, got to open, close, close any forms that are bound to that table or have data from that table. All right, and let's insert a row right here, insert row, and we'll drop an address to line right there, and that's fine. We'll save that, close it, and I'm going to leave it blank just to show you what happens when we add it to our invoice. 
All right, let's go back to the orders. Oh, wait, one more step, one more step. Our invoice is based on this order invoice queue query, so we have to add it to that too, because remember when we, when we built this, we only brought in the fields from customer T that we needed, right? Address, city, state, and so on. So we gotta add address too as well. Where are you? There you are. Okay, add it over here as long as it's in the query. It's right there. Save it, close it. Now we should be able to add it to our invoice, orders, invoices. All right, right click, design view. I'm gonna slide these guys down like that. Let's just copy address, copy, paste, control C, control V. Open up this guy. We'll change this to address two, and don't forget to change the name. Okay, save it, close it, close it. If I print an invoice, now you'll see that it's empty, right? Which that doesn't look nice. If there was something in that field, I didn't put it in the form, but if we put it right in the table, let's put address two in here. I'll just put a bunch of X's. Okay, if there is something in the address two, then you'll see it there. Okay, but if not, it's blank. We don't wanna see blank. We don't like blank lines, that looks nasty. That doesn't look very professional, right? Okay, now, if there was nothing to the right of it, we could get away with using can grow, can shrink. Watch this, okay? Let me just take all this stuff and move it out of the way here. I'm gonna slide all that up here. So there's nothing to the right of this address block, right? This is all empty over here. You could select all of these, right? Go to their properties, right click properties, find can grow, can shrink, under format, slide all the way to the bottom down here. Where are you? Can grow, can shrink. Yes and yes. Can shrink means if this is null, if there's nothing in it, then it can disappear and its height will just become zero as long as there's nothing to the right of it. All right. But now you can see it's gone. Address two is gone because there's nothing over here. But, and, and this works fine if you're just doing like you're doing a, like a, a mailing, right? If you use like my letter writer, right, where you're sending a letter, because usually there's nothing over here, it's empty space. But with an invoice, you usually got stuff next to it like this, all right? You got stuff over here, you got stuff over there. So this trick ain't gonna work, watch. See, right, because you got stuff over here, it spoils that can shrink. So that's not gonna do. So what do, how do we get around this? Well, the trick is, the way we get around this is, is to take concatenation to the next level. We concatenate all of these things in one field, one big text box. So literally delete all of that stuff, make this one big box that's that big, okay? Now, what goes in here? We have to put all of those fields in there and we have to put new lines at the end of each line. Now we can't use the new line character. There's a special character for those of you who do know programming, VB new line. All right, we can't use that, but there's a, there's a character combination we can use, which is character 13 and character 10. Put those two together and you get a new line carriage return. Okay, it's basically just saying you press enter. That's all, that's all that is, okay? All right, so let's go to data, let's go to controls. I'm gonna zoom in here, shift F2. Click here, shift F2, all right. So there's first name and last name, and then we're gonna add to it a CHR 13 and a CHR 10, just like that, okay? And after that, we're gonna add the address, all right? So it's gonna be address, and then and CHR 13, CHR 10. And after that, address two, and I'm gonna copy and paste it. I'm sick of typing that in. CHR 13, CHR 10, that's our new line, okay? Okay, and then city, and a space, and state, and a space, and zip, and CHR 13, CHR 10, right? And then finally, country. Okay, you get all that? Yeah, it's, it's much easier if you can see it laid out like a normal address block is, but you can't put, you can't hit enter in here, so it messes things all up. All right, so that's what it looks like. I know it's weird. Save it, close it, close it. Let's take a look. All right, look at that, okay. All right, now, address two is missing, but our formula didn't take that into consideration. So we're gonna use null math to get rid of anything that happens to be 
blank. Okay, if it's blank, don't show it, right? All right, so back to design view. Let's go back into here again. Okay, now try to envision each line, okay? So this right here is one line. All right, so put that in parentheses, like so. And I'm gonna change this to a plus and a plus here. And as far as this goes, first name could be missing and then I don't want that space there. So we're gonna put another set of parentheses here like this and change that to a plus. All right, so I'll get first name if it's there. If that's null, we won't have the space there. All right, ampersand last name and then CHR13, CHR10. Okay, the next line starts here. It's going to be the address and these two guys, right? And so we're going to change those things to pluses too. Change that to a plus, change that to a plus, and change that to a plus. That way, if, whoops, no, that's the wrong one. All right, address plus CHR13 plus CHR10. That way, if address is null, this whole thing evaluates to gone. Okay, and you won't get that blank line. Same thing around this stuff. Address two to there. Change these to pluses. Plus, plus. Okay, we still need these ampersands though because if one of these evaluates to null, we don't want the whole thing evaluating to null. So there have to be some ampersands. Okay, next line is right here. Put those around parentheses, right? City. We're gonna go and. Now this one's a little more complicated because you want to have a break between like city, then you want the and, and then you want the state plus with that there, and then you want another and, okay, and then your zip's fine, but then you have to have parentheses around this whole line, like that, okay, and then to that, then you're gonna go plus, plus, and then one more set of parentheses. <laughs> like that. And then finally country on the end. Okay, I think I got it. I think we're right. Let's see. Tab, save it, close it, hit it, boom. There you go. It's all about the null math, people. Learn your null math. Okay, this way, if any of these things are missing, it doesn't ruin the whole thing. So for example, if I go into customer T, if I put in my address two and open it back up again, I get my address two. If it's not there, right? Address two plus the CHR 1310, that little thing in parentheses evaluates to null and it disappears. Okay. If I'm missing a first name, Okay, I still see Rost with no space in front of it. Because remember, what happens is, right, first name plus the space, this will evaluate to null and it will add the last name onto it. And if last name is also null, that plus this stuff will basically delete the whole line. Watch, if I don't have a name, come back in here and check it again. And there we go. See, the whole line disappears. And that will work for every line. Okay, it's all about the null math, folks. Learn that null math. I know that's a pretty crazy equation. I will put a copy of that equation on my website and in the notes so you can just copy and paste it if you want to instead of trying to retype the whole thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to learn more cool stuff like this in my Access Expert Level 8 class, this is where I start building my order entry system with the invoicing and all that cool stuff. So I got lots and lots of lessons on my website to teach you how to be a cool access guy like me. <laughs> but that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, people. I enjoyed doing this. I hope you enjoy it too. Give me some comments down below. Tell me what you thought of today's lesson. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. 
Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover 
lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.